What do you need to happen in your life that's not happening right now? You are so gifted and anointed. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your problem is you. Your problem is you. No, I'm gonna say it again. Your problem is you. You don't need no business cards, no websites. If you good, they'll find you. You don't need all that. Your breakthrough is about to come right now. The only thing that's gonna stop it is you, your ability to make the shift. That's it. And some of you, because of where you are spiritually and because you are humble and because you believe in God, you, you about to make that shift immediately. Some of y'all, you're going to call me two years later and say, E, I got it. No, when you start doing what God tell you to do, it ain't going to be no room. Why is it not going to be room? Because you're not supposed to borrow, but you're supposed to lend. Some of y'all are so dumb, you praying for you when you don't even know that God don't even plan to give you that little that you're praying for. Because if he gives you that little you're praying for, you're going to be satisfied and you're going to get your blessings cut short. Why? Because there's a portion you're supposed to get to give away. The real blessing is going to come in the portion you're supposed to give away, not the portion you keep it. But you're so spiritually immature that you're going to pray for a million just for you and your family and then your blessings going to get cut off. Because the because the blessings don't come from what you get. The blessings come from the seed you plant that's going to bring you back more. So that's why God ain't bless you yet, because you're going to take the blessing and go get a whip with it. You so you so sick and you so worried about what people think about you. You still on what people think. Some of us driving cars, not because God told you to drive it, but your self-esteem is so low that you got to make people think you somewhere that you're not. That's a sickness. You have a low self-esteem. You care more about what man thinks than what God thinks. You, you tripping on what I think about you when God pissed at you and that don't bother you. You, 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 you have more concern about what another human thinks about you. You're closer than what you think with just a quick shift. You are closer than what you think. Come on, Holy Ghost. About a hundred yards. I could run a hundred yards. Right now and still not be tired after the hundred. That's how close they were. You close, and the devil done told you, just get a divorce. You close, hold on. You close, you about to drop out. You gone too far now. You ain't got but two credit. Hold on, you three kids in. You can't quit now, hold on. But this is my sixth time taking it. You gonna pass on the seventh, hold on. But you better get something from all that hell you've been through. You are a hundred yards, come on. You are, I'm talking to somebody. You ought to get excited. You are a hundred yards away. You are a hundred yards away. You can see it in the distance. You can see it in the distance. A hundred yards mean I can see it with my eyes. You close, boo, don't give up now. You close, my brother, hold on. You close. You close. If you was going to give up, you should have gave up in the night. You close now. You close now. You could taste it, and the enemy know you could taste it. You ever, you ever notice that the closer you get to that thing, the more he gonna discourage you? The more he gonna try to break you? You close? You close? Hold on. Hold on, my brothers. Hold on, my sisters. You close? You close? Ask God for perseverance. Ask God for strength. You close? It's about you won't break me. You can't take me. I fought too long. I fought too hard. If I was going to quit Satan, you should have got me a 17 homies. And when that thing tells you to quit, you look at it in his eye and say, I ain't going nowhere. I will break you before you break me. You will not defeat me. You will not destroy me. Some of you are so ignorant. You've been through so much hell. You going to quit now? You should have quit 10 years ago when you got raped. You should have quit 10 years ago when he walked out on you. You should have been quit. You don't quit now. It's the 10th round. You got two more to go. And when you get to success, it's not about skill. When you get to a certain level of success, it's about stamina. You, you were born. You were born with greatness in you. How long are you going to give me excuses? And this person didn't do that. And this person. Come on. I need what's your why? I need you to look at them every day, think about them every day, let them feel you every day. If it's your mama, whoever it is, I need you to feel, I need you to feel. This thing's so serious to me, y'all. I told you, I got it planned out. If I die today, I got everybody taken care of. I was here. My wife would know in my death that I was here. She still would be provided for in my death.
you are not alone. I thought because my biological father wasn't in my life, I thought I was alone. I thought because, you know, I had teachers that didn't necessarily see my giftedness that I was alone. Listen to me very closely. That is the biggest lie. You are not alone. Number one, you're not the only person that has ever gone through it. Number two, you're not the only person that has gone through it that's going to get through it. And number three, you're not the only person that's going to rewrite your story. There are other people who have re rewritten their story. You can still have a phenomenal life. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? We all, we talk about today, we are human, but you are not alone. You think Michael Jackson sang that song because he was trying to impress you? He was going through it and trying to get on the other side of it. So Mike said, you, one of his greatest hits, you are not alone, I am here with you. Though we're far apart, we lead with our heart. You are in my heart. We're not alone. We go online right now, say we're struggling with whatever we're struggling with. There's a community waiting for us. So I need you to connect with that community. When you leave today, whatever your thing is, I need you to leave and I need you to get online. I need you to talk to each other or commit or do a support group amongst yourself. And I need you all to support each other because people need to understand we are not alone. I will get to a place in my life that when you ask me, ET, what do you do professionally? I will tell you that I energize. I am a performance enhancer. I'm the juice. You walk in my, you, you, you come in my room down and out. When you leave, you ready to run through a wall. It took me years to be able to say one word or one phrase to get people to understand. I develop people personally and professionally, I develop. And so I want you to speak it out loud. I used to say, I have a problem being linear. It takes me too long to say, well, one person, because I, I would be like, whoa, that's deep. Somebody would ask my man a question, 10 seconds, he would answer it. They would ask me, I'd be like a minute and 15, like, I can't get it. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to narrow this thing down. And somebody came up to me like, what's going on? E, I was like, yo, I'm struggling with it. Oh, okay, let's go through some exercises. I can help you. I'm still not where I want to be, but I'm a whole lot better. Let me give you an example. Somebody said, E, in your conference, you're charging $2,000 when you come to Phoenix. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about doing day two, but it's $2,000, bro. Like, what's the difference between day one and day two? I was like, in day two, we're going to customize. He was like, customize? I was like, yeah, call me Tony Starks. I said, see, Superman, whether he got on an outfit or not, he's still Superman. He was born with natural abilities. You weren't born to execute. You're not Superman, but I'm Tony Starks. I'll make a suit that will make you a super executor. And then for those of you who really know Tony Starks, he just didn't make himself a suit. He made Spider-Man see. And I'll be your Alfred, Batman. You are a normal person. But I'll make your suit, your car, your mo He's like, yo, where do I sign up, E? I'm, I'm all over the place. I need that customized. I, like, I got you. Boom, I know how to say it in a way now where it's simplified and somebody can understand it in 30 seconds. But I had to speak up and say, I'm gifted but I'm not linear. I'm gifted, but I'm not focused. And I need laser focus. I'm focused, but not laser focused. And this light is focused, but a laser can cut, can do surgery because a laser focus is different than focus. I knew what my struggle was. And I knew if I said it openly, I could get help. What do you got to do to separate yourself? What time is that? What time are they getting up? Good. So you need to be up at least by what? Seven. 
Am I better than the other motivational speakers? I don't know if I'm more talented than them. I just know I get up at three o'clock and put my videos out first. I just know I do five a day. So if you're actually better than me, nobody will know. I'm separating myself. I'm putting my stuff out on Sunday night in the shy, but in the world, it's Monday. So what are you doing to separate yourself? Two, three more, talk to me. What are you doing? Wake up early, I love it. What are you doing? Accountability, coach ain't gotta tell you. Your mama ain't gotta tell you, your daddy ain't gotta tell you. But that's what happened when you got an entitled spirit and you think you there already, you don't hold yourself accountable. Just because a man is on top one day, it don't mean he gonna be on top forever. And just because you're not on top today don't mean you ain't gonna be on top forever. Like, don't try to be something you, like, don't listen to stuff on and try to be something you're not. All right? Don't be like a studio gangster. Right? For real, some of y'all, you come from good backgrounds. Like, embrace that. Some of y'all come from good homes, good parents. You got two parents at the crib. Or you got your mom and your dad both involved in your life. Your mom pray with you. And you get out the house trying to act like, you feel me? I, look, I, like I told y'all, I'm from this shot. You can look up my birth certificate. I went to school too in Detroit. You can look it up. I don't got to act like I'm hard. I don't got to act like I'm nothing. Like I'm going to be who I am. I don't care how much money I got. I don't care how much fame I got. We are humans. Be who you are, bro. Whoever you are, wherever you come from. You come from the suburbs, you ain't got to claim like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you from the north side of Chicago, you ain't got to be, you from the suburbs, you ain't got to be like, yo, I'm from, I'm from the west side. You ain't got to try to claim something you not or be something you not like. Be comfortable in your own skin is what I'm trying to tell y'all. That's how I blew up. So I'm myself, bro, and I'm comfortable with myself. I'm about 5'10 with my shoes on. I'm comfortable. Do like, are you sure? I'm comfortable. Married 510. Been married 30 years 510. Two beautiful kids 510. I don't need to be 6'6. Six, six. That's your life. I see dudes 6'10. I'm like, you wasting it. You bragging about you 6'8? You wasting the height. I'm using all my 510, bruh. I'm using all of it. Not to be funny, I ain't never got beat up. I use all my 510. I ain't been broke. I use all my 510. I use my mouth. I don't dream to be 510, uh, uh, 6'4. I love my life. Y'all got to start loving your life. And whether you make it to the league or not, you are not, you are not who you are because of the league. You are who you are because of who you are. And if you make it to the league, then the league is going to be blessed with your presence. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Be comfortable on who you are. Be comfortable if y'all poor. If you come from a family right now that's broke, you use that, use that to your advantage. I use that to my advantage that I was a high school dropout, that I was homeless, that I ate out of trash can. I, I love dealing with a dude who think because he come from money, he better than me. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. You got money, but do you got that dog? Yeah, you got money, you got privilege, but do you got that dog? Can, do you got that stamina? So yeah, you might have something I don't have right now, but if I work hard, I can have what you have. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget who, where you come from. My last name is Thomas. I represent my stepfather who stepped in my life because my old dude didn't want to be there. I represent him. I could change my name if I wanted to, but everywhere I go, I respect the man who came in for me when my father wasn't there for me. My mom was 17 years old, high school. They told her to get an abortion. I respect my mom for not getting a uh, an abortion. And so I respect the last name. Everywhere I go, I bring my mama pride. Everywhere I go, I bring my sister's pride. I bring my son's pride. Everywhere I go, I got kids, the decisions I make. My son has to deal with the decisions I make. My daughter has to deal with the decisions I make. Your mama and daddy and your family have to deal with the decisions you make. So tomorrow, when you start training, train like it's your, train like this, this your life, not a game. Like this your life. Like this the last opportunity, the only opportunity. Give it everything you got. And if you fail, you can at least do what? Come on, you can say what? You tried. But if you don't go out there and give 120%, you're not a man. A man don't always put forth effort and accomplish his goals. As men, we fail too. We don't always do everything perfect, but if you're a real man, you try. I've always been there. I ain't trying to tell you I'm the man because I got money. I'm the man because I, I have a responsibility and I live up to my responsibilities. I give 120% of everything I do. That's all I'm asking you to do. So when you go out there, stop playing yourself. Don't disrespect this game. Don't dishonor this game. If you're gonna go out there, don't go out there with just skill. Go out there with skill and go out there with will. Adversity is guaranteed. You're gonna hear me say this a lot. 
Look, I'm gonna be saying that the rest of the year. Why? Because we act like when it happens, it's a shock. Like it just throw us off, right? We, we act like we in heaven. We act like we already in the kingdom. We not in the kingdom. This, 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 this earth shall pass away. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? It's gonna happen. There was a time where, you know, I would wake up and just feel like today gonna be, it's gonna be a bright day. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting up, smile, I'm playing. I'm talking about, I got Kurt Frank, smile. And I'm, and I'm such into this, you know, optimistic zone and this optimistic place that after a while, all the adversity, you know, it started to wear on you. But then I said to myself, yo, E, stop. It, it's not the adversity itself that's killing you because it's not like it's new and you've not ever experienced adversity. But, but what's happening is because you are almost worshiping a great day, a day without any trials or tribulations. And so when stuff start happening, it's like, it throw me off. And God was like, stop. Adversity is guaranteed. You know it's coming. You know you're going to see it. You're going to experience it. Stop. Stop it. But, but the choices you make as a result of it, that's different. Adversity is guaranteed. Y'all, y'all not going to see everything alike. It's going to be some conflict because there are differences in opinion, which is a blessing. And so I need y'all to stop. I need you to understand adversity going to come in your house. Somebody might end up getting sick. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like adversity is going to strike. But the question is not, is adversity going to strike? The question is, what choices are you going to make when adversity strikes? Are you going to choose to still get along? Are you going to choose to love y'all differences? Are you going to choose to be able to communicate in a way where y'all 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 not getting it? Make like turn it into a, a, like a storm. Come on, are, are you not going to stop? Are you going to stop talking to people and cut people off because they don't act the way you want them to act and do what you are? You hear what I'm saying? Like why 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 what what sense does it make to call ourselves believers in the Most High if we're gonna treat people like people treat people when they don't know the Most High? When 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 they when they don't when they're atheists and they don't believe that there's a God when they don't believe God exists, like when they don't read the word, when they don't have all this beautiful instruction through the word, like we, we acting just like them. What, what's the purpose? And so praise God this morning, adversity is gonna strike. It, don't let it make you a, 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 a evil person. Adversity is gonna strike. Don't let it make you bitter. Adversity is gonna strike. Don't make it, don't make it, make God feel like he, you forgot what the word said. Amen, matter of fact, adversity shouldn't change his plans for you. I'm just being real. Adversity shouldn't change God's plans for you. What's, what's happening on the outside shouldn't change what's happening on the inside. What the devil doing should have nothing to do with what God doing. Oh, come on, somebody. What the devil is doing should have absolutely nothing to do with what God is doing for you. Absolutely nothing. The plans that God has for you, amen, those plans should be put in motion. You should receive those plans. You should embrace those plans, and you should live those plans out. You should be reading it yourself three, four times a day. I have plans to, oh, praise God. I got plans to prosper you, not harm you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And what I'm trying to show you is that if we would give God our whole, then we would start taking our whole into our businesses. And we would start taking our whole into our marriage. And we start taking our whole into our health. And we start taking our whole into, are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't car, car, uh, compartmentalize this thing. That's why he said he wants his all. And so because many of us do 60, 40, your wife gets 60, but then some other woman get 40. Your husband gets 70 or 80, and then some other man get 20. Hey Amen. Your kids get 30, 40, and then what you going to work and giving those kids a seven. Right, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Because we're so used to uh, giving parts here and pieces here, we, God is saying, don't do that. That's why you're not successful. You're not successful because you're not giving it all. God said, you don't need to be praying about what you want. I know what you have need of. I need you to pray for somebody else. Some of y'all, all you do is pray for yourself. You just pray all the stuff that you want. And then when God asks you to do something, you can't do nothing that God, you don't have no energy for nothing. Are you hearing me? You spending so much time trying to blow some business up, absent of God, when if you would just put God's work first and let God use your talents and let God use your gifts, God would bless you. Amen. What, do you, what does that mean, pastor? I shouldn't go to work. Yes, you should go to work. But why are you waking up and going straight to work? Why are you not waking up and giving God the praise and the honor and the due that he deserves for giving you that gift, for giving you that opportunity, for giving you that business, for allowing you to get hired? Why, is, why are you not waking up and giving God at least 10, 15 minutes? Why are you not in your word? Why are you not praying? Why do you not have a study time, a, a, a worship time, a praise time? 
Why are you not connected with other believers? Why, why is there not the, the 50 hours you putting in your job? Why is there at least not five hours a week that you putting into the work of God? Why are you not at some school uh, 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 helping at some school? Why are you not at some youth detention center? Why are you not at the hospital? Why are you, why, why are you not starting a, a soup kitchen? Why are you not using your gifts uh, for the Lord? Why are all your gifts being used for you so you could blow up and your family could blow up? Why is God not benefiting at all from all the stuff that he's done for you? Why are you the only one benefiting? That's why God doesn't give you certain blessings he gives other people. Why? Because he can't count on you to serve him. He can't count on you to do his work. Don't ever, don't ever worry about God asking you for, his, for your all. Why? Because he is all. He is the maker. He is the creator of all. And so if God takes all out, God can put all back in. Oh, as a matter of fact, God can take all and keep all in at the same time. You missed what I just said. God can take all and keep you with all, all at the same time. Do what he tells you to do. You are not where you're supposed to be because of you. You are not where you're supposed to be because of you. You are not where you're supposed to be financially because of you. It's all you. And it's because you're having a bad moment. You are human. You are human. I had a thought the other day, human. And I had it, I was on a treadmill, I had it for about 60 seconds. Then I had it for 90 seconds and I was like, well, let's stop right now, let's stop. Let's stop, let's stop right now. I don't know why you're thinking this because it is not helpful to where you are. It is not helpful to where you're going. Human. Stop. You are, you, you discipline yourself and you stop and say, nothing about this thought is going to help me do what I said that I want to do. When you get a thought that's not your thought, stop letting that thought just take control. It doesn't belong there. Anything that's not in alignment with your dreams and your goals, let it go. And so you're going to stop in the middle of the day with your phone and you're going to put your earphones on and you're going to listen to whatever you listen to and you're going to take five minutes, ten minutes, however long it takes, and you're going to get out of that funk. What would your life look like if you only listen to your voice and you use your inner energy to help you to become successful? What would it look like? You're more concerned about how they feel about you than you how you love yourself. And you got a love problem and you need to fix it. You don't love yourself and you need to fix that. Why? Because you're concerned about what they think. They're not even you. Whatever you learn, use it. There's a reason why God gave it to you and went for you to be smart. Whatever information you get today, Make up in your mind two or three of the principles you're actually going to use them, not go, wow. Does that make sense? Now, I need you to do me a favor. The deeper you are, I need you just to pray the whole time that you will humble yourself. Really, because some of y'all in here, you're like, I know everything already. You wouldn't be alive if you knew everything already. So when you walk out of this place, I need at least three things that you're going to do that you weren't doing before or you were doing and you're going to do it better. I need you not to go you deep. I need you to go, there's three things I want to learn that I never knew before or three things I need to learn so that I can take my game to the next level. All right, so here's what I want to tell you and it's going to hurt. But if you're not exactly where you want to be, it's your fault. If, if you're not, if there's an area where you're not successful in, like you want to be successful, it's your fault. Now here's the cool thing about it. If it's your fault, then you have the power to do what? You have the power to change it, all right? So when we leave here, whatever you don't have that you want to have, if you're willing to make the adjustments, you can have it. So because we've been enslaved, what happens now is that we see wealth as money. All right, and I want you to understand something. When I break down what wealth is to you, money is low hanging fruit. It's the easiest thing to get. I just wanna make sure you're clear on that. And the reason why I say that is I, I wanna help you because what happens for a lot of us is we get money and then all of a sudden we think we made it. You have, you, you have not, money is the easiest thing you can get. Why? Because you live in a capitalistic society. So money is the easiest thing to get. 
be in a relationship for a long period of time and not get a divorce, that's hard to do. Having a successful relationship with your kids, that's a hard thing to do. So, so what I want you to understand is, when you make money and you walking around with the Louis bag, I feel you, congratulations. That's the lowest level though. There's nothing wrong with making a lot of money and buying stuff, but you cannot make money and then walk around thinking you all that in the bag of chips. But because you make money and you live in a house and you got stuff, that does not, that's not what Dr. Martin Luther King died for. That way he wasn't on that. He didn't say, I'm about to die so you can go buy Louis purses. Right? Is that clear? So I just want you to make sure that when you make good money, you put it in its proper place. Money is good to have. But if you could exchange a great marriage and a great relationship with your kids and only make 50 grand versus being a billionaire, but don't nobody, can't nobody stand you, you'd probably go for the 50 grand and have a healthy family. I don't care what kind of house you have without lights, without the microwave, without the stove, without, without energy, right? It doesn't work. So I want you to do me a favor though, right? Because we're going to do the energy again, but here's what I want you to do. I need you to understand what energy does. So when you are at 70% energy, you only produce at a 70% level. When you're at 90%, you produce at a different level. When you are at 120, you produce at another level. Now watch this, I gotta share this with y'all so that you understand where it comes from. So you can have a mother who is being chased with her newborn baby with a dog and she has the strength to make that dog move. But the very next day, if she's running by herself without that dog, without that child, she may actually not be able to move that dog. So it's the energy of her child that gives her courage that she doesn't have on her own. So the reason why I'm telling you I need you to be energy and I need you to be energized is because when you're energized, you can produce for you and your family in a way that you can't produce when you're giving 70, 80 percent. So whatever you got to do, you do it. But I'm not about to compromise because you're inflicting pain. And there are those of you, you were this close, but you compromised. You let your feelings get the best of you. You compromised. You compromised. You let your anger make you say something that you didn't really want to say. You let, you let the fact that you was lonely. Some of you have sold your greatness and your destiny for a couple dollars. And what I'm doing now, I was doing 20 years ago, and I have not been. I didn't break. So what? You don't understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. So what? You don't see my greatness. So what? You don't understand how I do what I do. This is what I've been called to. And under no circumstances will I surrender. Under no circumstance will I quit. And you can't change that. You can't change it. And you let a little pain stop you from your dream. Girl, you was there. You was running your business. You were there. And then your mama didn't like the fact that you was doing it. Your mama didn't understand. And you let your mama in your ear. Like it was your mama's dream. You let your daddy talk you out of it. That was yours. That was something the Creator gave to you. That belonged to you. My mother never understood, but she working for me now. I didn't quit because people didn't understand. I worked harder when people didn't support me. Nobody's giving us $1,000 to do what we do. To this day, we never stop. I wake up every single day. This is not about you, you selfish. This is not about you, remember what I told you. This is about the next generation. Did you hear Eric talk about, you know, his wife is a part of this, his in-laws are a part of this, his children are a part of this, and a matter of fact, whoever his, ch his son was, he was like, we gotta meet, meet me in the back. I gotta meet you, I gotta take a picture. I'm taking your father's word. he has been doing this thing for 30 years, so you must be amazing. So he mentioned all of these individuals who are blessed by this work.
And guess what? Eric is a human just like you. And this wealth that he's amassed, this company that he's started, listen to me very closely, you could do the exact same thing for your family. So we start not with you and your house and with your car and your stuff. We start with the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. Like, like we start with generational wealth. I want you to be so good at what you do that the next generation, the next generation, the next generation are not only financially successful, but they have the blueprint to be successful in any area of their life. Now, now you have to understand where I come with this mindset. I'm from Detroit, Chicago originally, but for the most part, I grew up in Detroit. And listen to me very closely. There's a, there's a family that they will never work again because of the work that their grandfather put in, or great-grandfather, or great-great-grandfather years ago, and his name was Henry Ford. And because of the work, and because of the creation and the innovation of this man, now his family owns the lions, and the, pretty much the city, and buildings, and real estate, and opportunity. So they never have to work again because of what their grandfather did. I, I literally want you to look at this company and I want you to see it as the opportunity for you to create generational wealth for even the unborn. Listen to me, you gotta hear me. The work that you put in from now on is gonna be bigger than the car, bigger than the house. Listen to me, if you work to take care of the next two or three generations, all that other stuff is gonna be added. But if you make money and you don't do it the right way, then each generation is gonna have to start all over again. And I, I need you to really think about what I'm about to say. Why are you here? Like, no, literally, why are you here? I know why I'm here. Right, 20 years of experience, and there are a group of you who have a poverty mindset. There are those of you who have a workman's mindset, and I know because I grew up in Detroit, blue, blue collar. And I remember when I told my mom I wanted to be an entrepreneur, and she almost lost it, fainted and died. No, hear what I'm saying. There are those of you who signed up. There are those of you who made I'm sorry, I wouldn't call it a commitment, you're interested in the business. And then there are those who are committed and then there are those who are fully committed. And my job today is to get you to fully commitment. Right, my job is to get you to fully commitment. Now look, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm a little jealous. I'm a little jealous because the industry that I got into, I didn't, I didn't have an Eric. And I didn't have a person with 30 years of experience. And I didn't have a person with backing and with a blueprint. As a matter of fact, 2006, when I started my entrepreneurial journey, it was on YouTube. But I made a commitment every single Monday that I was going to give the world 120%. I showed up every single Monday and said, thank God it's Monday. And I put out content as an entrepreneur. I just gave 120%. I said, bring it from the bump. Thank God it's Monday and video after video after video after video after video after video after video and then people start loving it and then I start going from Mondays to every day and then I went from every day to two times a day from every day two times a day to three times a day and became the number one motivational speaker in the world see what happened was I went from being interested to committed to fully committed it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're somewhat committed. It only matters if you're fully committed. And when I became fully committed to doing videos, fully committed to getting better, fully committed to making adjustments, that I literally became one of the best motivational speakers in the world because I went from being interested in doing it to committed to doing it to fully committed. I want you to ask yourself, where are you in that spectrum? Where are you? Where would you place yourself? Am I interested in this? Am I committed to this? Or am I fully committed to this? I want you to write that down. Now, here's the scary part. That whatever you write down and whatever your reality is, that next generation is only going to benefit based on what you just wrote down. You are enough just like you are. You don't need nothing else. You don't need another suit. <laughs> I know you was like, I need a computer. <laughs> I need an updated computer with all the software, with the bells and whistles. Listen to me very closely. The way you were created, you don't need nothing else. 
everything you need for your success, you have it.